In today's show, we've got some news about club level rooms reopening, Avenger Campus opening, headline news, meetups, trivia, and oh, so much more all in today's Disney Parks podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times. And get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Well, all right, everybody. Welcome to the show. And we're so glad that you are here. Before we get too far into it, we want to make sure that we share and give a shout out to our good friends over at Destinations to Travel. Doesn't matter what type of a plan for a vacation. I know things are starting to open up slowly. And so we really should start planning our next vacation, kind of get our minds uh, excited about the future. And it doesn't matter what type of vacation you're looking for, uh, a family-friendly affair or a romantic affair. Well, not a romantic affair, but you know what I'm saying. A romantic getaway, a uh, destination event, a uh, cruise, when cruises open back up. Uh, it doesn't matter. Any type of travel, uh, the experts at Destination of Travel will definitely be your guide to whatever your dream vacation is. So the best way to get in touch with them is to go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash travel. Sign up uh, with a little uh, quick little form. That'll get sent over to Destination to Travel and one of the amazing travel planners will get in touch with you and they'll start booking your magical vacation we want to thank them so much for being our sponsors uh, not only that we want to thank them for being part of our team we appreciate them very much uh def- definitely want to uh, encourage you to go to destinations to travel that's disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash travel how you doing excellent. tonight Uncle? excellent there's yeah. something i had to say oh uh stay tuned uh we'll probably start doing it next week uh uh, destinations to travels coming down here with a gaggle, <laughs> a yeah. swarm of their agents. Uh, they're going to uh, blitz all the parks. They're going to be live all day, all night. Uh, they're going to be in the parks. They're going to be at the shows. They're going to be at the food. They're going to be at the resorts. Uh, we're going to try and help them out as much as we can. We have, you know, job thingies, but uh, we're going to try and help them out as much as we can. But stay tuned. Uh, I'll gather all the information, and then you'll be able to uh, follow uh, us live on all the social media, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So cool. stay cool. tuned. Sweet. Uh, so what you do uh, Disney this week, buddy? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> start with the uh, movie that you went to go see. Yeah, uh, so I went to see uh, Cruella. Uh, I'll give you the the Reader's Digest kind of version. Made a reservation Memorial Day to see it at AMC at Disney Springs at 2.30 in the afternoon and found out that uh, I was not going to be able to probably get into the parking garage. So I uh, pulled over to the side of the road, canceled the reservation, made a reservation at a movie theater close to my house and went to go see it. And I was one of six people in a theater that probably holds about 300. (laughs) but get to that part to tell you that it was good. It was a good story. I think I, uh, I like where they're going with this. It actually told the story of the character to a certain point in time. They didn't have to rejigger and re ruin 101 Dalmatians for me to understand. Right. Uh, You know, uh, the, some of the characters you're familiar with are in there and you kind of see how they get their start. But we don't know the doggy skin thing like John was talking about in some Patreon shows. We don't know yet. But we do know that they are creating a sequel for the prequel. So uh, there's going to be a Cruella 2. The soundtrack is awesome. I would tell you to go see it. I think you're really going to... I think you're going to like it. I liked it. And if you don't want to go to a movie theater, then watch it on Premier Access. Gather all of the... The friends in your neighborhood, it's $29, cram as many people, charge them a buck a head. You get 30 friends to come over, and then it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. That's what I would do. Or just, <laughs> you know, buy the movie and have everybody else bring food. Yeah. Yeah, do that, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, do that, too. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't seen it yet. I, I'm, I, you know, Sid wants to see it way more than I do. Mm. Um, I don't know. There's just, you know, I'm itching to go see Black Widow. Yes. Um, I got those tickets. Know. Yeah, do we have time yet on that? July 5th or something? Oh, you may be on vacation. 
Do you have a time? Oh, no. Seriously? I think it's July 4th weekend. Damn it. I'll be in Atlanta. Oh, well. Um, we'll have to wait for the weekend right. after that. Raffle, raffle off the ticket. Make some money. Um, they don't so, yeah. Inspire. Yeah, even better. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know. I just, I just don't have a lot of... You know, and I love Emma Stone, and I love the work that she's done, and and uh, I think she's a, a yeah. fine. Yeah, Emma and Emma, Emma and yeah. Emma, and uh, I think the soundtrack is amazing. I think they spent mm. a crap ton of money on it, yeah. which is available on most streaming services. Like it's sure. available on Spotify, sure. you can listen to it. Yeah, um, Sarah was or Sid was really excited about the that. Yeah. So we found it on Spotify, so she's jacked up about that. So yeah, so go check it out. Uh, yeah. A bunch of people that I've seen and talked to said they loved it. So. Yeah, Cruella. Who knew? Yeah. Um, what else did you do this weekend? Uh, I also went to Cape May uh, Cafe for dinner Friday night, and um, no, you went. You not went Cape, uh, no, uh, uh, <laughs> Grand Floridian uh, Cafe, right. and they really butchered this menu: steak, salmon, lobster burger, Impossible Burger. Lobster burger, like a, like a. It has some lobster on top with a lobster thermidor sauce. Oh, okay. um, that's it. That's wow. that entire menu that's, now. That's it. Yeah, there's like no crab cakes. There's no pasta. There's there's nothing. It's, Chicken it's, nuggets for the kids. I don't. I don't even know. I didn't get that far. Wow. It, it was just obliterated. Obliterated. So, uh, everything else was fine there. Um, they are for capacity reasons. What they're doing is they're using 1900 uh, Park Fair. They're using that uh, restaurant uh, for dining. So you may not actually sit in the cafe. You may sit over at 1900 uh, because, you know, they're still doing this. You know, we have to have people six feet apart, even though it's yeah. down to three. Some places it's not even that. Um, so they're still doing it. And, uh, so they're they're serving up at nineteen hundred since that buffet yeah. is dead. Yeah. So understood. Just, just be warned if you actually like the ambiance of the cafe. Say I want to sit in the cafe. So right. Cool. Yep. Anything else? Uh, we had a meetup at Splitsville. Had a pretty good turnout. Yeah, great turnout. Yep, we had uh two tables. We were so big of a group. We had a split up, separate. Uh, but yeah, it was good. It was a lot of fun. It was good to see uh, people outside, outdoors, in the public spaces, being oh, normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, and a big shout out to our friends over at Splitsville. They yes. accommodated us mm -hmm. big time. They initially gave us a table that would have been way uncomfortable, uh, but then they gave us some space, and it was like the best space they could have given us. It was awesome. Yeah, and that little lounge area they built downstairs is fantastic. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. <clears throat> That's really great. Um, and the really food cool. is always good there. And it does not look like they shortened up their menu. Not by much, if any. Yeah. I couldn't tell. So yeah. uh, if they did, I don't know what they took off because there was a lot of sushi and still pizza and entrees and salads and bowls and all of the normal yeah. stuff. They, great select. Yeah. They did not cut back their menu. So if you're looking for... Yeah good food and you're tired of disney's abbreviated menus go to splitsville just saying speaking of speaking of abbreviated menus mm -hmm. um one of the other things we got to do this weekend was we we tried the cape may uh cafe breakfast brunch breakfast yeah. idea i think it's breakfast um, yeah I know it's breakfast but they had some like a like a late brunch edition that popped up for yeah. So anyway, so uh, they no longer have, <coughs> excuse me, they no longer have the buffet. Uh, it's all you care to enjoy uh, family style, which is very similar. I mean, literally virtually similar to uh, what's going on over at Whispering Canyon over at uh, Wilderness Lodge. Mm -hmm. And the same problem I have with Whispering Canyon I have here, they bring you this big skillet looking thing full of food and then every other refill is like a smaller plate with smaller portions and it's not everything. Like I want another one of those. Yeah. You know, bring bring me a full compliment. And they just wouldn't do it. Yeah. It's like it's lost in translation, I think. Right. But 
Uh, overall, the food was great. They have a reduced menu, so I mean, you mm-hmm. start out with a with a yogurt and fruit granola mm-hmm. taster, and uh, then you have like eggs and sausage and bacon, yeah. uh, and they had this weird meat potato hash and potato barrels, aka tots, tater tots. <laughs> and uh, then they had uh, French toast, Mickey waffles, and um, pancakes. But the Mickey waffles were more like buckwheat waffles. Mm. They weren't like typical Mickey waffle, Mickey waffles. Yeah, they weren't their Belgium mix. No, no, they were definitely like something. Felt like a. It was they were good, but they tasted a little bit like buckwheat. Mm. And uh, <laughs> and then at some point. The server came out and said, uh, would you like like uh, salmon? Oh, and I forgot. They also have a little bread, you know, a couple of croissants, a couple of little things. So then the, the, the server came out and said, would you like a, a salmon brunch add-on thing? And we're like, like yes. Yeah. Like smoked uh, salmon. Like a lox kind of yeah. lox kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It was it was cool, but we didn't have any bagels. Right. So it was weird. So we're eating the, you know, the fish and the veg and all that stuff, but there was no bagels. But you know, it was great. It was great to be back in Cape May. It looked great. Everybody was face masked up and mm. face plated up, and you know, the guests were sitting there just being goofy. And um, but it was great to be back in the resort. Um, word of warning: Don't ever flash or carry concealed license. Do not use a carry concealed license as a form of identification. That did not go well. <laughs> I knew I had my driver's license on me somewhere, but, but I opened up my wallet and I was like, oh, I, I'm, you know, I wasn't running late, but it's like, I, I wanted to go park. Mm. And I just pulled out my carry conceal license. I'm like, here, he's like, uh, is that your only form of ID? I'm like, no, my, yeah, my it's a driver's government license, ID, but it doesn't matter. It's a <laughs> federal government ID. He's like, yeah. are you carrying? Yeah. I'm like, no. He's like, are you sure? <laughs> I'm like, yes. It's none of your business. <laughs> That's like, uh, you know, back in the day uh, when the TSA agent would say, well, do you have any explosives on you? <laughs> well, if I'm a terrorist, I'm not going to like, yeah, oh, yeah, hold on my whole suitcase. I got, uh, you know, 40 pounds of uh, C4 in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh you didn't want to know. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. yeah. No, but my underwear is rigged to blow yeah. it in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stephen's asking, what food do we recommend from that restaurant? I'm assuming you're saying uh, Cape May. It's not really a choice. You just get everything yeah. on there. You, you get, get breakfast items. Yeah, you get breakfast. You know, eggs, yeah. sausage, hash, potatoes, uh, yeah. French toast, pancakes, and Mickey waffles. Yep. That's it. Yep. Not, not a lot of options there. Yeah. And it's not like you get a menu. It's just yeah. like literally, here's what's coming. Yeah. And you can have as much of that as you want. All right. Now, um, there are uh, substitutions for, you know, plant-based or dietary things, too. So if you do have dietary restrictions, obviously tell the server. Or if you want plant-based things rather than real food, then right. you can have, you know, those rather than dirt items. Right. Right. <laughs> and... um I, I didn't tell you this, and I, I won't go too far down the road, but the uh, the the slightly undercooked Disney sausage got me again. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I almost didn't go to the thing last night. Shame on you. Because I was like, okay, no, no, that didn't. <laughs> There's no bueno. Anywho, other than that, it was great. It was yeah. so good being back in the, the beach club, and uh, it was so much fun being at Cape May. Um, so yeah, it's a good weekend. Good weekend was had by all. Yeah. Oh, safety tip for Disney Springs. If you're going to Disney Springs, you can only enter via the far end by Planet Hollywood. You cannot enter at the Splitsville, even though you're going right to Splitsville. That is an exit only. Yes. You have to go all the way to the other side. Right. So if you've been there recently, you know, that's where they were doing the health screenings and security screenings. Mm-hmm. They've taken away the health screening component. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you still have to do all that other rigmarole. So, yeah. Any, anything else you want to add, T? 
No, I think that's it. Well, there's nothing else we can do but get into the, the news. news. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. Well, as we uh, continue watching Disney phase uh, their reopenings of hotels at Disneyland, uh, there's some exciting news. Club level rooms at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa are now available for guests arriving beginning on, well, last last Friday, June 4th. Uh, all club level uh, rooms feature the wonderful amenities included in Disney's guest rooms, plus some additional special touches. All club level guests can bypass the front desk and check in for their stay on the club level. They can access the online check-in service up to five days prior to your normal arrival via the Disney account. Uh, club level guests also enjoy exclusive access to Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa's Concierge Club. Uh, the veranda, which includes a dedicated concierge desk and complimentary refreshments offered throughout the day. Um, guests with reservations at Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa arriving June 4th and beyond will receive a letter directing guests to contact their original booking agent if they would like to upgrade or modify their stay to a club level room. I'm sure there's probably an extra fee involved. So, oh, of course. Yeah. So to modify. Free. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So go check that out. Um, if you're interested, if you're going, uh, upgrade the rooms, take a lot of pictures and let us know what you think. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about now Disney world is getting their club rooms back and the sales begin June 4th. Uh, so the Disney Grand Floridian Resort and Spa opens their Royal Palm Club on September 16th. This is really people for the 50th. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, let's grab a little more money out of the air. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Disney Boardwalk is opening up their club level as September 23rd. Uh, Disney's Contemporary Resort is September 26th because they have a big rehab going on. Uh, yeah. Disney's Wilderness Lodge is December 16th. <laughs> hey Disney's Coronado Springs is December 16th. Uh, each club level lounge will follow physical distancing in December? I don't think so. Hmm. Uh, their lounges will continue to provide personalized experiences for guests, including exclusive food and beverage options throughout the day and special Disney touches for all ages. For Disney Animal Kingdom uh, Lodge, Disney's Polly, Yacht and Beach, we anticipate those three lounges will open at a later date. So that means <clears throat> later than December. Huh. <laughs> Please note, bookings can be made online or by calling destinations to travel. Yep. Absolutely. Uh <clears throat> We've got some more details revealed for the Disney After Hours Boo Bash mm -hmm. uh, Fantasy Range at the Magic Kingdom Park, especially as Disney gets ready for Walt Disney's uh, 50th anniversary uh, in October, the, quote, world's most magical celebration. Uh, Disney's also thrilled to share some more frightfully fun details on what guests will expect during the limited time, uh, excuse me, limited capacity special ticketed event. Special uh, cavalcades will pop up throughout the night, including Mickey's Happy Halloween Cavalcade with Mickey Mouse and friends dressed up for the occasion. In the Disney Villains Halloween Cavalcade, uh, villains will take to the street and celebrate their favorite time of year. Jack's Nightmare Cavalcade will feature Jack Skellington, Sally, and Oogie Boogie riding down the parade path to This is Halloween. And last but certainly not least... Maleficent will also make an appearance in the form of a fire-breathing dragon. Um, some favorite friends will also be lurking around, from the lovely Miss Carlotta at the Haunted Mansion to Goofy, Chip, and Dale in their uh, Halloween best, with other surprise characters popping up across the park as well. Guests can even stop and listen to the cadaver dance during their special comeback from the dead performance select complimentary snacks like ice cream novelties and popcorn along with select beverages are included in the cost of the event after the park closes the day guests enjoy less time waiting in line for more than 20 attractions including seven doors mine train 
Haunted Mansion, Jungle Cruise, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Peter Pan's Flight, Space Mountain, and more. A variety of specialty food and drinks will also be available for purchase, including the Apple Ginger Dale Yes, I said that correctly. Frozen drink, which is frozen apple cider mixed with ginger ale and topped with whipped cream and a foolish mortal funnel cake. Tickets for this hauntingly fun filled three hour event will go on sale June 15th and can be purchased online or by calling 407-939. Four two four zero. Guests of select Walt Disney World Resort hotels could book their tickets as early as June eighth. Uh, huh. Tickets during the early booking window will only be available by phone. Tickets start at one hundred and twenty nine dollars through uh, one hundred and thirty nine dollars plus tax for August and September nights, and one fifty nine to one sixty nine for October nights plus the coveted one hundred ninety nine dollars plus tax for Halloween annual pass holders and Disney vacation club members can take an additional $10 discount off for uh, event nights in August and September. Uh, Remember some night, uh, some evening events in August and September will be from 930 until 1230 PM. So there you go. And I think the rumor is, is you can get into the park as early as seven. That's the rumor. I think so. Yep. Okay. (laughs) Here is your chance to win one of 50 dream vacations on the Disney Wish. The new cruise ship. Yes. So the new cruise ship, the Disney Wish, is one year away from the inaugural season, but that doesn't mean that you have to wait until then uh, for summer vacation or dreams to come true. Disney is now announcing that you can win a trip on the ship. So it's now through March 22nd of 20. 22. Mm. That is a long contest, my friends. Yeah. You can enter for a chance to win one of 50 cruise vacations aboard the Disney Wish, setting sail the maiden voyage, which is in June of 2022. So you have to follow Disney, and I would follow Disney and Disney Cruise Line both. Uh, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And then mark your calendars because each month they will be posting a new chance to win on the first of every month. Then you're going to choose or snap a photo answering the question of the month that they post on their social channels. um, And that'll get your entry. So you have to post your photo and a response with the hashtag. You ready? Write this down, kids. Here we go. Year of wishes and the hashtag sweepstakes. By commenting on the corresponding Disney Cruise Line Facebook post, posting on Instagram, you want to tag at Disney Cruise Line or tweeting on Twitter and tag at Disney Cruise to be entered for your chance to win. Five lucky winners will randomly be selected each month to set sail for the enchantment on June 4th, 2022. So check out yearofwishes.com for more details. I'm so glad we've gotten away from the disney.go.gov.com live dot whatever. Somebody got smart. Hey, how about we just do yearwishes.com? Oh, my yeah. God. What a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I can't. Uh, do we talk about the price of the cruise? Did you get? The, did you grab that new story? No, I did not. I, I didn't want anybody to have a heart attack. I've heard rumors that they're talking in the thousands of dollars. Well, you know, a, the June 22nd cruise sold out in like minutes. And oh, some of the rooms were going as high as $15,000 a night. For what? I mean, I get it. I mean, I I am in need of a cruise more than anybody on the planet. But, dude, that's a lot of money. That's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. All right. So uh, we want to thank all of our current patrons. If you'd like to support the show, the best way to do that is to go over to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon. 
That's DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And what we do is we do up to three shows a week just for our Patreons. And we have a live show that we record that we do that on at 7 p.m. Eastern uh, that you can have access to. But if you want to come in at $5 a month, and uh, we appreciate everybody that's there, you get two shows extra a week. If you come in at $10, you get the uh, previous two shows. Plus, you get the Disney Plus podcast, which is uh, uh, people are really digging that. We also have a level where you can get all three shows plus these killer Disney by the numbers T-shirts uh, each month sent to you. No extra cost. No, you know, we're not charging mailing on that. It's all included. Plus, we've got some great rewards for every dollar amount that you donate uh, each month. We have some great rewards at that level as well. Uh, Patreon's got a great way that you can pay annually and save 10%. And we still have a few hats left. Uh, if you want to get a really cool Pixar hat, you, you can either join or you can level up. Go from $5 to $10 or $10 to uh, $35. Uh, and we'll send out a brand new Pixar hat. We want to get everybody involved because we do some really cool stuff over there. We love our patrons and we appreciate each and every one of you so go to disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash patreon support the show and sign up today all right let's talk about meetups uh we got two left (laughs) there's august 7th at ravello for breakfast and here's uh i got the table booked we're all ready to go we're gonna meet at 9 30 uh let's say just outside of the restaurant which is on the lower level uh, and then breakfast will commence at 10. We will be seated around the time. Uh, if you would like to get uh, the breakfast you all have to pay for, we reserve the table, come join us. If you would like, you need to get a ticket, uh, which is your guaranteed seat, okay? Mm-hmm. Because there's only 10 seats, and three of them are us, so there's not right. many left. Right. The tickets right. don't cost anything, right? Yeah, tickets don't cost anything. It's free, but that's how we know that you're coming. Okay. Right. That's your commitment. Okay. If you're not going to come, don't take a seat from somebody else because that, that's bad. Uh, really bad. It's on our Facebook page. So go to uh, facebook.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast and uh, you'll see the event link. Or you can go to uh, HTTPS. Uh, uh, colon forward slash forward slash ravello dot eventbrite dot com uh, to get your ticket. Okay, uh, and then the next one is coming up in December. We might do something in between. I'm still thinking of something because <clears throat> August and December that's a long time to not see people. We may do something. Okay. Uh, so December 11th, Monterey Crawl. Uh, we'll get more details on that once we get a little bit closer to that. All right, uh, trivia. Last mm-hmm. week, John, the question was, speaking yep. of Cruella, Pongo mm-hmm. and Purdy originally had how many puppies in the movie 101 Dalmatians? And I know most of you would say, well, it was 101 Dalmatians, Tony. What the hell, you a moron? And hey. you would be wrong. <laughs> it was originally they only had 15 puppies. Mm. 15 is the winner. Uh, and that's Bob and... It's in the mail, Bob. It will be as soon as I put it there. <laughs> uh, and also the week before is winter. Peggy is there, too. All Sweet. right. This week's trivia question, John, is this. You ready? Mm-hmm. In Aladdin, mm-hmm. what is Jafar's last wish? So what did Jafar say was his last wish? I wish I was a real boy. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> if you know the correct answer, uh, email that to Disney Parks Podcast at gmail.com. Okay. Correct answers. Send them there. That'll be great. Yep. All right. Hey, did you uh, did you get a chance to watch any of the Avengers Campus stuff yes. from uh, Disneyland? Yes. What are your initial thoughts of Avengers Campus? Um, it's one attraction, a stunt type mm. sh- show thing mm-hmm. a- and a eatery. Yeah, kind of my feelings as well. I was like, wow, that's really awesome. And I know that because of the pandemic, they're not allowed to have all of the 
character interactions as they want to. Right. Like supposedly you're supposed to be just walking there and like, boom, there's Iron Man and boom, there's T'Challa and there's boom, there's Ant Man. Right. So I, I get that, but you know, it's not to beat the dead horse yet again. Yeah. And I don't want to be I don't want to be a negative Disney fan or podcaster, but you know, Disney's scaling down their land so much so that it's really like Hey, we've got this new Avengers campus. Great. What did you put in? Well, we we put a uh, we put a Quinjet. Whoo, that's awesome. Can we climb on it? Can we ride in it? No, no, you yeah. can't. You just look at it. Well, that's cool. What else did you build? Um, we uh we have this really cool stunt show. Mm-hmm. Ooh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens on the second and third level, so you really can't really get close to it. Uh, and then Spider Man flies through. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. You mean like those videos that we've all been watching for two and a half years? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, what rides do you have? Well, we have the um, the uh, Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Mm-hmm. Didn't we already have that a few years ago because of the yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what new ride do you have? Oh, we've got this really cool thing. It's this web slinger thing. It looks, it looks really cool. You get to shoot webs out. And while it's awesome, it looks a lot like, you know, Toy Story Midway Mania. <laughs> And then the rest of it is literally like a restaurant and a food cart. Yeah. And a gift shop. Swarmer. Swarma. Swarma stand. So I'm like, I I don't want to say this, but I'm going to. I was a little disappointed. I had yeah. not been really keeping up with what they were putting in it. And I was mm. a little disappointed. I thought there would be more. Yeah. But it still looked cool as crap. And I would love to go see it. But yeah. Speaking of that, here's uh, planning your mission to Avengers Campus. Um, uh, Avengers Campus consists of several heroic locations, each hosted by a different superhero or their ally, which I don't know if I'm really hip to that name because ally means a whole lot more than just friend to me. Uh, Share their unique powers, technology, and knowledge with recruits. However, there's a lot that we still need to go over. And so we're going to share you with uh, that information to prepare for your mission. First up, all recruits planning to visit Avengers Campus will need both a park reservation and valid ticket. We knew that. Second of all, you have to be from California for the time being. Theme park reservations are limited to uh, due to capacity and will be subject to availability. Make sure you met, plan your mission accordingly. When Avengers Campus opens, you'll be able to enter at the main entrance located right next to the Worldwide Engineering Brigade, also known as Web, just past Carthay Circle Restaurant and across from Golden Vine Winery. There are two ways to gain access into Avengers Campus. You can either use the standby queue or the virtual queue option for Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure. Uh, here's how each option works. For the standby queue, when Avengers campus reaches a capacity and standby queue to enter Avengers campus will be available to the uh, right of its main entrance to the world wide engineering brigade for those looking to take in the sights and sounds of Avengers campus or virtual queue for web slingers, a Spider-Man adventure in order to experience web slingers, Spider-Man adventure guests are required to join the virtual queue, which is accessible via the Disneyland mobile app. There's no standby line for this attraction, similar to star Wars rise of the resistance. Uh, virtual queue enrollment times will be twice daily at 7 a.m which you can do from the comfort of your home or hotel room and at 12 noon to learn the details of how the system works, visit uh, the know before you go page for more info. Once guest boarding groups are called, they should head to the left of the land's main entrance along the parade corridor. Uh, You may enjoy Ventures campus after boarding, uh, after your boarding group has been called and you enter the land. So, uh, we always recommend downloading the latest version of the Disneyland app onto your mobile device prior to your visit. Uh, You'll be able to use the app to join the virtual queue for web slingers, uh, place a mobile order for food and beverage, view park maps, and more. Be sure to have location services on and Bluetooth enabled, and turn on notifications to receive your virtual queue callback details and other important information. If you're a fan of the Play Disney Parks app, you can also enhance your experience with with interactive moments throughout Adventures Campus, you can discover new in-app experiences like Adventures Campus trivia, plus land-based and attraction digital and, uh, achievements. 
heroic encounters. Spider-Man takes to the skies high above Avengers campus. And dude, it looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, where you may also have heroic encounters with the likes of Iron Man, Black Panther, and the Dora Milaje, Black Widow, Ant-Man, and the Wasp, some of whom are making their first appearances in the park. At a nearby ancient sanctum, Doctor Strange will train recruits in the mystic arts by bringing this ancient sanctum to life with powerful spells. You may even witness Spider-Man swinging into action high above a Ventures campus with gravity-defying acrobatic feats never before seen in a Disney theme park. Speaking of Spider-Man, yeah. put web-slinging skills to the test and experience what it's like to have powers and have his powers in the new Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure. The first Disney ride through attraction to feature the iconic friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Also, while in Avengers Campus, help Rocket bus his fellow Guardians of the Galaxy out of the Collector's Fortress in the fan favorite Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout. So for now, it's time to get ready for the action adventure as it's already open and wanting you to come by. I'm jealous. I want to go see it. Yeah. I want somebody to go around this entire land and change the B to a D. So we could just call it wed. Oh, that's funny. (laughs) Turn everything back to wed. Yeah. It's wed slingers. (laughs) I also saw like the, the, I forgot about the doctor, doctor strange area. Mm. That place looks amazing, but I'm sure it's much better at night. Sure. Cause it's really cool. Lights up really cool at night. Yeah. And uh, let's not, you know, slight the Spider-Man robot flying through the air. I mean, they really, they teased us with their little demo videos. Right. But if you watch the video that they posted on the Disney Parks blog, you go see that. It looks, I could have sworn it was a human. I mean, it's yeah. doing the, the whole thing. I was like, Oh, they didn't show that in the demo. <laughs> yeah, it's arm flailing. And yeah, it, it looked, yeah, it looked real. The whole it's leg awesome. movements, the hand it's movements. Awesome. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, they they just teased us. They gave us a little taste. Yeah, and, and left the good part for the for the show. Uh, yeah. There are places that Spider Man can also like repel down things, obviously. Because the way they did it for this grand opening thing, I don't know, how, it's all the time. Like the robot shot across, and then Spider Man seems to be, you know, then, uh, you know, re- spidering down this, you know, part of the building. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was just for this grand opening thing or that's what's going to happen. You know, like robot goes this way, real person comes this way. <laughs> I don't know if the like, two things are related. Yeah. It looks like from another video I saw that. Uh, you know, Spider-Man pops up and he says, hey guys, how you doing? Mm. And he chats and he says, all right, let's do some Spidey warm-ups. Mm. And so he does yeah. a few acrobatic moves mm. and then uh, Friday kicks in and says it's time to try out the uh, altitude testing. Mm. Mm. And then Spider-Man disappears and then he's like, Fing! and you see him fly into the air. And, uh, and then when he lands is mm. when he pops up and he flips over the wall and goes down the wall. Yeah. Then he comes out that same side and he does, you know, yeah. photo shoot meet and greets with guests. So uh, I guess why didn't we see any Iron Man in this presentation or I, land? I saw, I saw some videos like a door you? opened up and Iron Man walked out mm. okay. and was waving at people and stuff like that. Um, I saw, I saw promos of Captain Marvel, but I didn't see her doing yeah. any guest interactions in the real videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, they had the real Captain Marvel in the. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Should have just cool. had her suit up and just yeah. You know, yeah. While you're here, cool. you might as well just suit up and walk around. Nobody will know the difference. <laughs> the cool thing was watching the whole Dora Milaje thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, that was those... a little stunt thing on the. Yeah. No. No. Those are the, those are the three uh Wakandans that walk out and do the staff thing and then they do oh, a little I didn't see that part. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's awesome. Yeah. What you're talking about is the Black Widow and Taskmaster yeah. Yeah. fighting. Yeah. Can't remember who they're fighting, but yeah. God, it's cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Well, John, you may have your uh, dream come true because Disneyland uh theme parks is now welcoming back people outside the state of California, June 15th. What? And they are expanding 
the window, allowing you more time. So what's this all mean? So since Disney began its phased reopening, it seems like last week, uh, <laughs> uh, Disney California Adventure Park on April 30th. Okay, so it wasn't that far ago. I guess I've experienced countless magical memories and moments back at the happiest place on Earth. From waving hello and nothing like a $125 ticket <laughs> It says waving hello makes your day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> waving hello to your favorite characters from far, far away. Uh, all right. So with the new land, Avengers Campus open uh, in California Adventure Park on June fourth, plus the reopening of, of Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel on June fifteenth, and then the Disneyland Hotel on July second, there couldn't be a more exciting time to visit Disneyland. Disney is pleased to announce that beginning June 15th, you will once again be able to welcome travelers from outside of the state of California. Whoa. Two theme parks, out-of-state visitors must now begin booking their return to the parks on Disneyland.com or called Destinations to Travel. That would be your best thing. Yes, definitely. Until June 15th, all guests visiting the Disneyland Resort must be California re- residents visiting in groups no larger than three households. That's three mm-hmm. households, not three people. Uh, and I think there's a size limit to the amount of in that three household. Uh, the state of California strongly recommends that all guests be fully vaccinated or obtain a negative COVID-19 test prior to entering theme parks. In addition, all guests will be required to wear an approved face covering throughout their visit at Disneyland. They're also excited to share the additional update to theme park reservation system. So this was uh, a couple of days ago. Disney decided that the booking window for the theme park reservations has been expanded, expanded to 120 days. Wow. So allowing guests even more time to plan their return. Now, remember, when you buy your Disneyland ticket, you can get your theme park pass simultaneously. Not like here in Florida where you got to buy one and then pray you can get one. So right. there, they're happy, they happen simultaneously. So that 120-day window will allow you a very big planning window. So right. if you're coming from out of state, that's good. At least you got a booking window now. But That's great. I did not read this part of having a either being vaccinated or COVID uh, tested prior to entering the theme park. Are they going to ask for proof of one of those two things is my question. Yeah, it's interesting. It's it's interesting to see if, what they're going to do. I mean, it's yeah. it's not something that we're doing here. I wonder if Governor Gruesome will make people do that there. Probably. It's probably their phase, part of their phase reopening deal. <laughs> yeah. Nah, interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, that's exciting. Nothing to plan on going to Cali anytime soon, but knowing that I can makes it even better. Uh we've got some favorite dining options are going to be returning to uh, Disney World. Walt Disney World's announced that dining reservations will open for there are open, excuse me, for dates beginning June twentieth at Tusker House in Animal Kingdom. Uh mark your calendars and reminders. This is a modified character experience where the Disney characters will parade throughout the restaurant and pose for physically distanced photos. Uh, instead of stopping at individual tables. Um, uh, we're also being t- uh, talking about uh, Chef Mickey's. Uh, I doubt they're going to be swinging those napkins, though. Uh, starting May 16th, uh, Chef Mickey's will offer an all-you-care-to-enjoy family-style dinner that will include no-touch appearances like snapping a selfie or waving hello as Mickey Mouse and some of his pals uh, make surprising appearances in each of the dining rooms. Similar to other character dining locations, guests will take home a souvenir with character signatures and colorful artwork. Uh, the dinner menu includes items that are sure to please everybody in your family, like starters of Mickey's uh, Chef Mickey Caesar, citrus post shrimp salad, and assorted bread. Main courses of gnocchi, roasted garlic potato gratin, 
uh, plant-based farro wheat fried rice, mm. prime rib, roasted turkey, and salmon, and an assortment of sweet treats to finish the meal. The kiddos in your group will enjoy mac and cheese and chicken nuggies, uh, turkey corn dog nuggets, and more. When did the corn dog nuggets become turkey corn dog nuggets? Because I've seen that more and more. Well, remember, they did that at Casey's for like three yeah. days. And they were like, there, there was a revolt. <laughs> There's a there's a, a ginormous nope. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, you took yeah. the hot dog out of the hot dog place? No, yeah. no, 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 no. I had to make a hot dog healthy, kids. Yeah. Uh, the aforementioned Cape May Cafe, uh, Disney's Beach Club Resort, reopens. Uh, it's already open. Guests returning to Cape May will find old favorites and new changes, along with its signature service and quality. <clears throat> the restaurant will serve breakfast and dinner, but Minnie's Beach Bash Character Breakfast and the Seafood and More Dinner Buffet will not return at reopening. The All You Care to Enjoy Family Style Breakfast menu will feature popular staples like pastries, including the layered, crispy, cream filled lobster tail omelets. I don't remember seeing that on the menu. No, I didn't either. Mickey Mouse, I would have ordered something that had lobster in it. Uh, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse waffles. Highlights uh, from dinner include uh, house-made Parker House rolls and cornbread, a seafood boil with a variety of fresh seafood, the turf platter with steak and chicken, and lobster mac and cheese. Uh, over at Tusker House, the Disney's Animal Kingdom uh, will reopen this summer during the modified character experience. Guests will enjoy delicious family style entrees inspired by the flavors of Africa and can snap photos with Donald Duck and friends dressed in their safari best as a promenade through the restaurant. Uh, Disney hasn't shared details about the menu or dining reservations just yet. So uh, stay tuned. They're coming. We'll let you know. Keep an eye out. And as soon as we know, you'll know. Yeah, that's all good. Food is coming back. Yep. That's great. Things are kind of getting sort of almost kind of like it was back to normal, maybe. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know, there's uh, on Buena Vista, there's uh, hotels. There's a Wyndham, a Waldorf, and a Hilton. And now to that collection, they've added a JW Marriott. Now, if you don't know what a JW Marriott is, it's the elite top tier of their Hotel group. It's the, mm-hmm. the creme de creme. It'd be like a Four Seasons. Okay. Right. So they are now open for business. And it is the only JW Marriott in the world to have family suites. Okay. <laughs> so if you're looking for like something with like two rooms and then a living room and a kitchen area, they got it. Okay. So if you're traveling with a larger generational type family, JW Marriott is now your go-to fancy schmancy place nice. besides the Four Seasons. Of course. Uh, I don't, how, how would you say this? A loom? A loom. A loom. Rooftop restaurant is now open and I've been trying like hell to get reservations. I, I can't, I can't get anything. There's nothing. It's crickets. I wow. tried calling. They're not even answering the phone. Oh, Tony Casanova, you do not rank the GW Marriott. <laughs> you don't know. I shall come you. for you. <laughs> you see the English knickets. <laughs> I will force it to a second time. Hey, listen, I know a place down the road that I'll take my money. Fine. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, this is a brand new rooftop lounge restaurant. Alum is a bringing Asian flair to Central Florida atop the JW Marriott Orlando Bonnet Creek Resort and Spa. Ooh. They got that naming probably from Disney. Hmm. At least it's, you know, 150 characters. Uh, yeah. with, with a footprint of 5,200 square feet and 150 seats. So it's not very large. Alum offers, and probably that's the problem. Alum offers modern Asian inspired menu and handcrafted cocktails set against a backdrop of nightly Disney fireworks, if they ever come back, and surrounding Bonnet Creek preserve i I think they sit up against the wildlife preserve Mm. so uh nothing can be built on the other side of them so you'll never have another hotel in your view uh every aspect of the venue was designed to amplify the space's panoramic views from the glass walls on the terrace to the indoor and outdoor seating there's even a sushi bar where guests can watch menu items come to life well i usually want my Fish not coming to life, but coming to dead. 
<laughs> it's a wraparound central bar in a wall fireplace, only further entrance the ambiance. The interiors of the loom also feature Seminole American Indian artifacts on the walls to honor the area's history. Well, kudos to wow. you, Mr. J. Dubba. Mm-hmm. A loom is located at none other than the J.W. Marietta Orlando Bonnet Creek Resort and Spa, which opened its doors. Uh, will open their doors in July of 2020. Located just outside the gates of Walt Disney. I don't think it's just outside. It's pretty damn close to outside. Nice. Uh, it also features 10,000 square foot spa, an outdoor pool, seven on-site restaurants and bars, a rooftop miniature golf course, a rock climbing wall, and complimentary shuttle service to the theme parks. Uh, you can make reservations at Open Table if you can get them. They're not open yet. Yeah. the uh, James and Susan stay there. Uh, I also heard that the parking garage is attached to the building, unlike our friends over at the Hilton, where it's a 30-minute walk from your car to the building. <laughs> so uh, this is, I hear, way more convenient. Mm. Well, no, I'm just saying that I don't think a loom's open yet. And Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm looking and I can't I can't seem to find it. Yeah. Like I found it in the app, but I, it's not like Well, I, I followed the direct link and I couldn't Ah. Uh, okay. I right. <laughs> from this story. <laughs> Understood. Understood. All right. Uh the Disney Par- the Dizzy Paris Park Pass reservations for pass holders is fully booked until September twenty twenty one. Disneyland Paris is reopening on June 17th, but Paris annual pass holders are reporting extreme difficulty booking park passes. The park pass reservation system works similarly to that of Walt Disney World. So according to the availability calendar, both Disneyland Park and Walt Disney Studios parks are completely booked for annual pass holders until September 16 and 17. The calendar currently ends on September 18th. Disneyland Paris posted on Facebook that they are well aware of the issue and are seeking solutions, including, uh, and, um, excuse me, indicating that their limited capacity may be to blame. They also announced uh, that June 15th and 16th will be past order exclusive preview days. Unlike what Walt Disney World's reservation system is, Disneyland Paris annual pass holders are not limited to how many park passes they can make. Walt Disney World pass holders can make up to three park passes, while some Disneyland pass Paris Park, excuse me, Disneyland Paris pass holders can theoretically have made hundreds, hundreds, preventing others from booking just one day. Wow. Yeah. Um, so if you're a Disneyland Paris annual pass holder, were you able to snag a park pass? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah, I'd like to know. Like that's crazy. Yeah. So we thought it no was crazy here. Thing, did they think maybe we should limit how many passes people can make? Yeah. No, it will be fine. Just to let them book yeah. the passes. Yeah. yeah. What could go wrong? Yeah. I bet they'll start canceling some of those. That'll be next week's uh, story. Yeah. I would have to agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a little bit more news about uh, our Galactic Star Cruiser. <laughs> uh, apparently, it's pulling into port. <laughs> Uh, it will include signature services, white glove concierge to help guests get whatever guests want at Walt Disney World. Okay. Uh, I would like to stay in the dream suite. <laughs> Man, you're really and stuck aban- with it. And abandon this ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Walt Disney World is currently casting internally only for a signature services cast members for the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. So if you are a cast member, sign up. You could be spending your days on a cruise ship mm. or a concrete tube right there in Osceola. Uh, The position is casting out for Disney Reservation Center. Uh, These white glove service cast members will help ensure guests have everything they need for the perfect vacation. The service can help with anything from tickets to dining reservations to recreation and more, perhaps offering what typical guests may not even have access to booking. 
Uh, earlier this month, Disney began casting for the actors, the stunt performers, the musicians, uh, I think for management positions as well. Uh, I think some of that is still online if you want to go try to apply. Uh, the hotel will offer two-day, two-night immersive experience in which guests participate in their own story within the Star Wars universe and visit Batu at Disney's Hollywood Studio. Now, I've heard some rumors to the contrary about the visit Batu thing. I've heard the two days and the two nights, you are stuck not to leave the hotel. Not to leave the hotel because... Technically, on a cruise ship, you can't leave and go somewhere unless it docks. And this is not right. going to be docked. Once it leaves its airlock, you're in space. So, allegedly, we're not sure. So, I'm not sure. I'm hearing you're not going to leave. And now we're hearing you could leave and go to Batu. Well, that runs counter to what we were told. We were told that you could be able to stay there and then you would be able to have... You would do your training, you would meet characters, you would have to go do missions and scavenger hunt and do yeah. whatever. Yeah. And do all this other stuff in Batu. Right. 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 Got to get this stuff straight, man. Got to yeah. get this stuff straight. I... I don't know. I, I'm like 50 50. I, I, part of me says keep them locked up for the two days because I'm sure there'll be plenty of things to do. Yeah. Uh, and look for and find and characters to meet. And, you know, there'll probably be a line for the, the lightsaber training thing. So mm -hmm. I just say keep them locked up for two days. And then once their two days is up, you throw them out of the hotel and they go stay wherever they want. And then they can get their access to Batu or whatever, you know, as part of their exit program. Right. Well, yeah. And the other thing about that is, is, OK, so let's stop and process through this. Let's say that's what it's going to be. You're on the starship. You can't go anywhere else. You're uh, two days, you know, or day and a half, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be on the ship. OK, yeah. great. So what's the use of having what's what's the purpose of having a concierge mm -hmm. make dining reservations? I think it's going to be the the preemptive concierge. When you book the trip, they're going to say, oh, what kind of pillows would you like? What you know, how many other days are you staying besides your two days? Where do you want to have the? You know, it's going to be all those things that's going to go with this white glove service because gotcha. it leads me to believe these are not going to be cheap. No. <laughs> not going to be cheap no hopefully you guys have uh if you're listening you took us up on the idea of starting to save your money especially through the pandemic because it's probably going to cost a pretty penny to get in here yeah uh and if the disney cruise line pricing is any indication yeah. this should be incredible to watch yeah and if they can sell a non-existent cruise ship out in a couple of minutes yeah I mean, yeah, exactly. It's not even done, and it's sold. Yep, that's got to be good for them. Yeah, we can't even cruise yet. No, so good for them. Uh, so the final news story is, according to internet sources, wink, wink, take this with a grain of salt. The Main Street I USA got confirmation. It's true. It's true. <gasps> it's true. So highly true. So now it's a stone cold fact. <laughs> Maybe Main Street USA and the Magic Kingdom will be getting a projection show as part of the 50th anniversary offerings coming to Walt Disney World, which does not shock me. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, they did it in uh, Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, while Disney has not officially announced anything, we've apparently been confirmed uh, that we're work uh was set to take place on main street usa before COVID 19 uh and it forced disney world to close now we're told disney is once again ramping things back up for a big projection mapping event to happen on main street usa uh projectors were previously used on main street usa in disneyland when sleeping beauty castle was being worked on a show called mickey's mix magic played in the absence of a Castle Nighttime Show in Hong Kong Disneyland. Disney debuted a show called We Love Mickey that utilized projections on Main Street USA while their castle was under construction. <coughs> Pardon me. 
So back home at the Magic Kingdom, it's not immediately clear if the works to bring projection effects to Main Street USA is part of a standalone projection show or if it's part of a bigger project aimed on improving upon the happily ever after nighttime spectacular by bringing projectors to Main Street USA during the show. Either way, uh, sources have said that Disney is going to be moving forward with the project as part of a renewed push to bring nighttime entertainment back to the theme parks. It's currently unclear if the work is being done to have the show debut on October 1st or simply at some point during the 18 month celebration. Yeah. Here's my go. thoughts on that uh, last part. I, I, I don't think they're going to throw everything out October 1st. Because uh, number one is it would make everybody come here immediately to do everything and not come back. (laughs) So I think they're going to put things out between October and the end of the year. And then again, the next year, put more things out to make you come, you know, twice during the at least twice during the 18 month period, if not more. That's my guess. Uh, and this projection show, I hope, is with uh, Happily Ever After and just make the entire park this full-blown, immersive, you know, projection show that you're standing in the middle of. That's right. what I would hope. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd enjoy that. Yeah. Because then it doesn't matter where you're standing. You can see it at the castle. You can see it on this side, that side. You know, it right. won't matter. And I say even do the train station behind you, you know. Yep. It's Fully you know, immersed. Yeah, do the whole damn thing. Light it up, baby. Yep, that'd be great. Light it up. All right. Uh, All right. Okay. (laughs) You're not going to do it or no? I was going to do it quick. Go ahead. Uh, Go over to T Public at DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash T Public. We still have some things over there. You can buy them before they take them all down. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> hey kids, how about a little headline news? And now, the headline news. Uh, we don't need the first one. Uh, Adventure by Disney announced their 2022 New England vacation expansion of uh, New England vacation and expansion of their private uh, adventures. Mm. So even in 2022, you'll still be able to do one of these private adventures. Sweet. Um, be- so just, yeah, just you and your family on a ABD. That's that's incredible. That's great. I yeah. mean, you talk about white glove service. That's that's yeah. it. That's it. We want to sleep in today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but we have 17 hours of programming nope. ready. No, no, we're sleeping in. See you at noon. Can we skip lunch? Uh, Shanghai Disney Resort uh, shares a look into their uh, fifth anniversary uh, cast and character costumes. Please go look these up on the Disney Parks blog. They are stunning fifth anniversary costumes. They're just stunning. For the love of baby Jesus. Can we get this for the 50th? Please, here. Yeah. Please, do something. Please, please do. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the new Jungle Cruise experience will open at Disneyland Park July 16th uh, and then work for hours here uh, will be later in the summer. Later cool. in the summer. Yeah. Uh, if you weren't watching the internet at all last week, <laughs> Harmonious had a full-blown firework uh test uh, it, it almost seems like a start to finish test from what we can gather there was music playing but it was very hard to hear from i tried a couple different people's videos but you know obviously they were at the boardwalk or the beach club right. and that's far far away right <laughs> you know they didn't have their little shotgun mics <laughs> bad bloggers um <laughs> how dare they how dare they but it looks really good, but we don't know what's happening with the <laughs> the sucking of the water and all the water being sprayed into the air. We don't know. We don't know what's on the screens. So there's right. a lot of things we don't know. The fireworks look good. They were shooting from perimeter. They were shooting them around the barge areas. 
So it looked very good, but we don't know. We we don't know. Disney's doing a pretty good job of keeping this under wraps. Oh yeah, I'm impressed. Oh yeah, I'm impressed. They're impressed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kudos to them. And we probably won't see this till October. Uh, Orange County here in Florida. This Orange County is moving to phase three, and that means no masks. No masks. Amen. Amen. We are close to the number. Uh, my guess it'll probably be in the next couple weeks they'll make the official official announcement. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Uh, DCL Disney Cruise Line is hiring back its uh, performing cast. So if you're an entertainer on one of the cruise lines and you know, want to be an entertainer on one of the cruise lines, because I'm sure they need more people, because not everybody's going to go back. Uh, check out the Disney Cruise Line webpage for job openings. Mm. And on that point, uh, simulated cruises on the Disney Dream are to set sail in late June from Port Canaveral. Um, so I think they have to do two tests. One at Port, and then one they go out to sea, do nothing, and then come back to Port. Uh, those are the two tests. Uh, I'm trying to find out how to get on them. Uh, I've heard it's through the CDC site. Then somebody said it's through the DCL site. I've emailed DCL. I've emailed the CDC. I don't know how else to do it. So if anybody has a golden ticket to how to do this, because uh, I've, I'm interested, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. Uh, this is not a rumor anymore. I, I first had marked this as a rumor, but uh, DVC has raised the direct minimum for uh, DVC purchase, increasing it to uh, 150 points now you need to own in order to get your DVC perks. And that's like, you know, the parties and the tickets and all that stuff. You now have to own 150 points. Wow. That's the way to make your money back, Disney. Cha-ching. As a stockholder, I applaud you. (laughs) (laughs) What What are points going for nowadays? I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, I think Alani is in the like the 170 range, if I can't remember. Yeah, I think Riviera is at the it was at the 200 range when we talked to Tim. Um, anyway, uh, Disney World continues on a hiring spree for more dining. Listen, if you want to be a server, if you want to be a cast member at Disney right now, now is the chance. I'm telling you, get in now because once they get to uh, some kind of capacity in the summer, they're not going to hire anymore. And then the doors are going to be shut for a while. So get in now. Get your seniority. Get it going. Yep. Do it. Trust me. Um, And then face masks are now no longer required in uh, any outdoor theater at Disney World. Well, thank you for that, Disney. We appreciate that. (laughs) It's not too many outdoor theaters happening in. Yeah. uh, Yeah. What do they have open that's an outdoor theater? No Indiana the, Jones, no Beauty and the Beast. Bird show? I don't know. I don't go there. Yeah, understood. <laughs> All right. Anything I else? Got nothing. No, that's All it. Right. Well, guys, we want to thank you so much for uh, listening, for being a part of the show. If you're not doing anything on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time, come join us live, facebook.com. Excuse me, facebook.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. You can always find us there. You can find us on uh, YouTube and uh, Instagram, all at Disney Parks Podcast. You can find us over on our internet home at DisneyParksPodcast.com. You can find our show archives, blog posts, and links to our amazing friends all across the Disney blogosphere. Uh, definitely want to uh, support what we do over at Patreon. So go to 